Hi, I'm David Herzog, and I want to talk to you today about an experience I had in Israel where I went to the third heaven. And it was pretty amazing. I had never experienced that before. I had been in prayer, had seen visions, have had dreams, and but never had like an open vision or, or never saw Jesus like directly. And we were in Bethel because I read Genesis 28. I was reading it while living on the mission field. And it said, and this is the gate of heaven. The story of Jacob where the ladder comes and he sees angels ascending and descending. And it, it ends it with, and this is the gate of heaven. Gate is a portal or a doorway. And I said, oh my gosh, that it doesn't say it was at that time. It said, this is the gate of heaven. So I realized this is, there's one of the geographical locations on the earth where there's literally an open heaven, a geographical portal on the earth that leads to heaven. And I realized later, because it was one of the covenant cities in the Bible, there's like four key cities that are covenant that God made with Israel. So I thought, man, I want to go there. So we go to Israel like we do, and we led a tour and an outreach. And I told the tour company, hey, I want to go to Bethel. Now at the time, there was the intifada, the war, and there was bomb, you know, suicide bombings. It was a very dangerous time, like 2004, I think it was around that time, or maybe 2003, 2004. And they said, oh, you can't really, you can go there, but it's dangerous. You got to pass Ramallah. You, you have to rent a bulletproof bus if you go. You have to have a soldier with a machine gun if you go. And it'll cost more money. He's trying to discourage me. And the more he talked, the more excited I got. Okay, let's do it. Yes. And he goes, sir, I'm trying to discourage you from going. Your tour guide doesn't want to go. I said, but we want to go. Please, I'll pay for it, whatever I want to go. So we go, we rent the bus. I stand up on the bus. Hey, everybody, we're going to Bethel today. And right away, the tour guide says, sit down. I go, why? He goes, because the windows are only bulletproof halfway. You're standing up. So if you were to get shot by a sniper, you still get killed. Oh, okay. So I sat down, grabbed the mic on the bus and did, and did the, you know, ex explain what was going on. We're going to Bethel. We're going to do this. So maybe we risk our life to get an experience with God because they're so hungry. We go past the checkpoints. We get to the settlement. So Bethel is like an Israeli uh, town where Israelis have settled there and it's a contested area. You know, some people don't want him there, some do, but it's a biblical area where God gave to, to, you know, Jacob and his people. This is your land, I'll give it to you. So we're there. We don't know where we're going. We're just in somewhere in Bethel. There's homes and some hills and no one knows. The tour guide doesn't know because tourists don't go there generally. Only now maybe. Tour guide didn't know and the Israeli soldier didn't know. So we're just driving around aimlessly and then we see this big water tower and the bus driver goes, I'm just gonna park next to that water tower. You guys just, just do your thing here. I don't, we don't know what, what we're looking for here. Okay, so we park and then there's this dirt road that goes like towards the end of a, a, like a mountain. And we go down this hill and then you can oversee the valley. You can see the other places, beautiful view. And there's this flat, flat surface. And we go, though, this is perfect. Found out later that actually was probably where it happened because archeologists have discovered something there. And when we left that day, there was actually a sign in Hebrew with the Jacob's ladder. And we asked a local resident there to say, yeah, this is where they believe it happened. So very interesting that God led us there. We laid down and I said, well, it says he laid down, he had a vision. So I told the group, I don't know what to expect, but we have a guitar player here. So we're gonna just have him play some guitar and just, you guys close your eyes, lay down, find a rock, just lay down and close your eyes and just see what God shows you. I, he, I told him, I've never had this happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but maybe you have a vision. Maybe God will show you heaven, whatever. I don't know, but I'm just, no, there's a portal here. Let's see what God does. So we're really experimenting, pioneering, which is kind of my spirit. I just want to see what people don't see, but what's in the Bible. And so we lay it out there and we worship the Lord. And, and I had an experience. Others did too. We found out later others had many experiences. Others saw each other in heaven and we, we confirmed the story separately apart from the people. It was amazing. And Jesus told them the same things. So I'm laying down there and I see myself going up, up, up and boom, up, I'm in heaven. And the first thing I see is the sea of glass. The Bible says it's like a sea of glass. Now, when you're experiencing this, you're like, wait, is it my mind just making this up because I want it to happen or is this actually happening? So, but I went with it and look, and look what happened. I'm there sea of glass, oh, this is nice. And I'm zooming along the sea of glass, almost like a drone. And at the end of the sea of glass is Jesus standing there at the edge of the sea on land. And I get closer and closer to him and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Jesus. And he just looks at me and like fire in his eyes. He got the, the hairs white, like bright. He's all glowing, like white, like the whitest white. And, and I, but there's love, but there's also like, like authority. It's like, whoa. And he goes, 
thank you for touching Isaac, my people, which is the Jewish people, because we have been reaching out to them, helping them, praying for them, feeding them, miracles, ministering to them. And I go, oh, you're welcome, Lord. I mean, yeah, of course, you know. And he says to me, thank you for touching Isaac. And would you also touch Ishmael? And I was shocked because Ishmael is the Arabs and the Muslims and the, you know, I was like, but when you're in that heavenly experience and you're looking at Jesus, you don't go, oh, Jesus, thank you for that word. Let me pray to Jesus about it. If it's Jesus, if Jesus is telling you, you don't need to pray to Jesus if it's from Jesus. And I said, okay, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me, whatever. Okay, I'll do it. And then he says, second thing, would you organize a conference for me in Jerusalem? Now, again, I'm thinking, is this my brain thinking this or, but I go with it. Okay, yes, Lord, I mean, what am I gonna say? If I'm in the presence of Jesus, never had this happen, the glory was so strong. I said, yes, I'll do whatever you, I love you, Lord. And then I come out of it. Two days later, a friend calls me, I'm at the Dead Sea. A friend from the States calls me and says, hey, we're gonna do an outreach in another town in Israel where there's mostly Arabs. We're gonna do a conference there. We're gonna reach the Arabs. And then I want you to organize another one in Jerusalem a few days later, and we reach more of the Jewish community. And he says these exact words, would you organize for me a conference in Jerusalem? I said, normally I'd say no, because I don't live there. Who am I to organize a conference there? But Jesus spoke those exact words to me in the open vision three days ago. So that, that was amazing. And we did it. We did this conference and it, we did both sides and it was amazing. And then a few days later, the Muslim world opened up to me. Suddenly, the first time I ever preached in a Muslim country, I got to preach in Kuwait. I got open door to Kuwait and, and it was powerful. Muslims were getting saved. Miracles were happening. Uh, Egyptian businessmen were getting touched. His little daughter was radically healed. Signs and wonders were happening. People were getting gold teeth and a weight loss and cancers healed and it was awesome. And then from that, God opened Dubai and then Bahrain and then um, been to many now, Jordan, Indonesia. And I'm going to another one very soon here next month. Um, so what happens is, you get a vision from heaven, you wait on the Lord, and God shows you things. So you, I know it's from the Lord because it happened within days of the experience with Jesus. But you can create a portal wherever you're at. Maybe you say, well, I can't go to Israel, but you can have an experience in your home. You can seek the Lord, you can say, Lord, I want like Jacob had, I want you to create a portal in my house. Let this be a gate of heaven. Let my car be an ark of the covenant on wheels. Wherever I go, the heavens are open, and you can create a place of open heaven by your commitment to the Lord, by, by worshiping him, by seeking his face. And that's what Jacob did. Jacob says, okay, God, oh my gosh, this is none other than the, than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And he said, Lord, if you stay with me like this and help me get back home safely and get me food and on my journey, I will worship you. And he goes, I will start to give you a 10th of all I have. He started tithing there. He goes, I, I want to give you like a covenant with you. It was like covenant was he was talking about. So you can make a covenant with God in your house or, or, where, or where you pray. Lord, I, in Sedona, I would go to this mountain and pray. It was just one area, wilderness area, nobody knew about. A few people would find it, very few. It was just me and God there. And I would have this open heaven portal place with God. Now I'm back in the Phoenix area, I have a place there where I pray. And so that's my portal. That's when I go there to pray, it's on my patio actually. When I go there to pray, the heavens are open. I'm looking at the cactus, there's a mountain behind me, but I'm just in the presence of God. And, and I had to break it in, because the first time you win it, it's like, oh, it's not open like my other place. So I pray, I seek God, I pray, I fast, I, I do whatever, and eventually that becomes more and more a thin place. The more you pray in a place, it gets thinner and thinner and it becomes an open heaven and you can have an open heaven place. You know, some of you during the pandemic got locked down and that was your, you created an open heaven because you had a lot more time to pray. But you know what this key is? Desperateness, hunger. I was just so hungry for more of God. I was seeing God move greatly. And it's like the more I see God move, the hungrier I am for even more. And I think it's never gonna stop till I get to heaven because there's so much more no matter how much you experience on this earth. Of course, when you get to heaven, it's gonna be the full glory because you'll be literally in the presence of the Father, Jesus, and we are in His presence in a sense, but even more so face to face. But that was the first time I had a face to face encounter with Jesus, where I believe I literally saw Jesus. He talked to me, He spoke to me. I've had dreams when I was a little kid where Jesus appeared, but never, you know, I was a little kid, but this is more real. It was more like, you know, I'm an adult now and I understood things. And so again, hunger. It's like desperateness and hunger create an atmosphere. If there's a cloud over your city and you need rain, well, let's say 30% chance of rain, 
50% chance rain. How do you increase the chances that something like this happens, these kind of experiences? Here's how you do it. Atmospheric pressure determines if it's gonna rain. The more atmospheric pressure on the cloud, the higher the chance of rain. So if there's an 80, 90% chance of rain, that may, that's way more atmospheric pressure. So how do you get atmospheric pressure on your desires from the Lord to be visited by God, to see heaven, to see things? Hunger, thirst, faith, desperateness. Sometimes that desperateness manifests as fasting and, and praying for hours and, and just waiting on Him. And that increases the likelihood of that, even dreams and prophecies over your life, that that thing you've been seeking God for will start to happen. Of course, it's gotta be God's will. You, you, so if you want something that God's not in His will for you, obviously that's not gonna happen. But something that you know is God's will for you, you know the Holy Spirit is for you, you know heaven is for you, you know, we are seated in heavenly places. We, you can access the throne, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. So that heaven is our home and we can, you know, Paul visited heaven, uh, you know, round trip. I mean, we're all gonna visit heaven at some point, but Paul got a round trip. You know, Paul said, I went and saw things. Now he did, he said, I know a man, but most believe it was himself talking about this man. He didn't wanna say it was himself and it saw things he couldn't even write, couldn't utter. Daniel saw things, he went to the heavenly realm. Some things he wrote, some things he had to seal up and he couldn't talk about. Uh, John on the island of Patmos saw the future and heaven. So, you know, Ezekiel, the, the, the cherubim and the living creatures. I mean, this is awesome. We can experience heaven. Heaven is for us. Not everyone does, but I think those who have a hunger for it and a thirst for it, there's maybe more of a likelihood that you'll have. Sure, some just see heaven and they never ask for it, but others like me, I was just hungry for that realm of, I just wanna be closer to God, really. I'm not trying to get a, a manifestation for a manifestation's sake. I just wanna be where God is. I just wanna be as close as possible. And if there's a doorway or a place where I can get into that realm easier, and I want that. So if that's your desire, just seek the Lord right now. Say, Lord, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I want more of you. I don't have to see an angel or a vision, but I do whatever it looks like, just bring your glory, your presence, draw me closer to you. And as I draw closer to you, Lord, draw closer to me. Just pray that right now when I pray over you. Lord, I pray for hunger and thirst to increase on your people. That would be, no, it'll be desperate, not just even hungry, but desperate where they say, I have to, have to have a visitation with God. I'm so hungry, I'm so needy. Increase that hunger, increase that thirst. And as that thirst and that hunger comes, Lord, give them revelations, visions, experiences with you, Jesus. The revelation in the Word of God, just when they're reading the Word. Heavenly encounters, oh God, like Paul had. In the name of Jesus, just bring it to your people. Bring a new realm of heaven, a new realm of glory that they've never experienced before, I pray. Even I could feel it all over my body right now as I'm talking about this, something is shifting in the atmosphere right now. There's in heaven is opening over your home, over your car, on your cell phone, wherever you're watching this, in your computer, on your TV. The presence of God is invading your home and he wants to make heaven real right where you're at. Some of you even are gonna notice your body's healed. We didn't even pray for healing, but suddenly your body's healed because heaven showed up. So I love you guys and be hungry and desperate. That's the biggest key I can give you. Desperate, not curious, oh, I'm curious, no, hunger desperateness where you spend time with God until he shows up. I'm David Herzog. I approve this message and I will see you next time.